the great crested newt. Our largest and most spectacular amphibian is disappearing. Numbers have plummeted since the 1960s. They now have full legal protection and you can be fined up to £5,000 for harming them. As a result of their power over British builders, the poor maligned newt has a black mark against its name. But the real cost of development in Britain is the destruction of its natural habitat, so we need to fight to stop its decline. This is it. This is one of the most stunning things you'll ever see in a pond. This is the male great crested newt. And if it was swimming freely, you'd see the magnificent crest along the back. And as it moves down, you'll see the big flat tail with this gorgeous silver stripe on it. Stunning. Here's what I love about these creatures. They can live up to 17 years, can regenerate lost limbs, scare off predators by secreting poisonous toxins from the skin, and trek up to a kilometre on land to find a mate. Now, despite all these amazing facts, I do know that not everyone shares my passion for all things amphibian. When up against a fluffy red squirrel or colourful kingfisher, the newt rarely stands a chance, dismissed as a slimy, cold-blooded nuisance. Since 1945, one million farm ponds have disappeared from our countryside. That's a lot of homes for newts, gone. And newts face problems on land too. They need damp environments such as compost heaps, the bottom of hedgerows and rough grassland where they can forage for insects. And it's these habitats that we're losing in our bid to tidy up the countryside. Newts are also the gardener's best friend. There's nothing they enjoy more than a nice juicy slug. And they play their part in the food chain, keeping mammals and birds, such as hedgehogs and herons, well fed. I'm about to meet a man who's as passionate about amphibians as I am. Professor Richard Griffiths from the University of Kent has devoted his life to studying these creatures. And I'm thrilled he's letting me get involved on a nocturnal newt trapping mission. This is a sort of semi-experimental system to monitor the colonisation of newly created ponds. The problems they've been facing are the same problems that's actually facing a lot of our wildlife. It's basically habitat loss loss of ponds but also loss of terrestrial habitat it's almost like a double whammy that they're actually getting how is this going to help with the conservation of great crested newts what we're trying to do here is to sort of see how well you can actually benefit newts by creating new ponds and exactly what the impact is on the wider population and in fact a lot of newt conservation is actually very very simple it's dig a hole and add water and you, if you're in the <laughs> right it. place yeah you'll have newts turning up. Rich's team is trying to discover more about the newt's complex life cycle. So they trap them, note down their vital statistics, and then let them go. So the most important thing is to keep an air bubble inside. We keep about a third air bubble in these little traps. So tonight, I'm going to set my very own trap. But it's not something you can try in your own pond at home. Rich and his team have a special licence. Is that about right? Uh, yep. Well, there, I've set my first new trap. And with any luck, tomorrow morning when I come back, that will contain a great crested newt. So, what have we got on here, Richard? This is the moment of truth. That's right, this is the trap you set last night, George. If you pull the funnel out... And... Oh, yes. Wow, it looks Loads like... in there. Well, I would say there... Oh, there's more in there. There is the star of the show. A male great crested newt. It is actually one of the most beautiful things you'll, you'll find in any pond anywhere. This is the bit that I think is really, really smart. You stick him on there. That's Each right. newt has a unique set of markings on its belly. Yep. We and place this piece of sponge, which won't harm him at all, over the top. And Rich has got a clever way of keeping them still for their close-up. And, you've got, and you've there's got a, his pattern. That's just brilliant. And you've got a unique fingerprint image, if you like, for, for each animal. It's Denzel. Yeah, it's very clear, isn't it? Yeah, named after Denzel Washington. 
Wow, my first Hollywood star right here in Canterbury. Understanding how newt colonies interact is vital if we're going to have any chance of protecting this remarkable creature. And the good news is you don't need to be a scientist to save the species. I'm off to the picture postcard village of Sonning in Berkshire to find out how. Environmentalist Alistair Driver moved here 15 years ago and realised the village was missing one vital ingredient for wildlife, a pond. So he built one. Which one of you is Alistair? Uh, that's me, sir. Alistair, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, Josh. Good to meet you. How did all this begin? How did this, this pond digging begin? Well, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a wetland nut anyway, so uh, I, I'm always keen on having ponds. They're, they're one of the most biodiverse habitats in the country, so it's good to have one from wildlife reasons, but they've also become a focal point for, for the community. When did you find your first great crested newt? Well, that, that was a bit of a and shock. Were, were you aware it was here? No, no, there was no, no records at all for the whole of this parish. And um, 2000 it was, we were doing the Millennium Pond Dipping, I hooked out a great crested newt. It was here, in this area? Yeah, right in this, this very pond that we're now clearing. And we're, there are now eight sites in the village where great crested newts breed. What's actually happening here? Um, well, we're clearing out this nasty Australian swamp stone crop, this invasive plant. So it shouldn't be here? Is, no, no, it's, it's come in of its own accord and uh, we have to clear it out periodically. It's great that Alice's work has encouraged newts to make their home here. It's not hard to do. This is conservation in action. Local communities coming together and just making a pond, maintaining a pond. All of this is going to help the great crested newt for many years to come. I think we've got a newt over here. What have you got? What have you got? Oh, look at that. Wow. Tell me all about it just um, looked into my net and I see this newt squirming around at the bottom. I think it's a great crested newt. It certainly is. Because of the underside of the belly, which is orange. This is a young one, yeah, probably yeah. in its second year, because uh, they do get a lot bigger than this. And, of course, you can only handle these under a licence. Licence, that's or right. Or supervision with a licence. So I have a licence for this. Well, fine. If you just put him down in that corner there. And there he goes. What they're doing here in Sonning is really inspiring and it's something we can all learn from. Saving Britain's threatened wildlife isn't always about campaigning. Sometimes it's as simple as putting on a pair of wellies and taking note of what's on your doorstep. So get involved and join your local wildlife group to help save creatures like the magnificent, the truly incredible Great Crested Newt. More extraordinary finds here on BBC One from 8 